anarchists did not try to carry out genocide against the Armenians in Turkey. They did not deliberately starve to death millions of Ukrainians. They did not create a system of death camps to kill millions of Jews, gypsies, and Slavs in Europe. They did not firebomb scores of large German and Japanese cities and drop nuclear bombs on two of them. They did not carry out a great leap forward that killed scores of millions of Chinese people. They did not kill more than 500,000 members of the Indonesian Communist Party, alleged party sympathizers, and others. They did not attempt to kill everybody with any appreciable education in Cambodia, murdering one-fourth of the country's population. They did not kill as many as 200,000 Mayan peasants and others in Guatemala. They did not kill more than 500,000 Tutsis and pro-peace Hutus in Rwanda. They did not implement U.S. and allied trade sanctions that killed perhaps 500,000 Iraqi children. They did not launch one aggressive U.S. war after another. There's a great deal anarchists did not do, but status did do. States are clumsy and inept in many ways, thank God. <laughs> but they are exceptionally good at wreaking death and destruction. Indeed, if they were not, they could not sustain themselves as states. In a functional sense, we may define the state as the organization with comparative advantage in deliberately, violently killing people and in appropriating and destroying wealth. What you see here are human bodies piled on a rail car in Dresden. This is only one of many such piles made after the British and American Air Forces decided in February of 1945 to firebomb this old and beautiful city when the war was clearly already won. These are some of the products of the German government at its death camp at Bergen-Belsen, as depicted in 1945 after the Allied troops had overrun the area. There were so many such pits in Eastern Europe that you cannot even begin to imagine. Here are some of the lucky ones after the state had had its way with them at Auschwitz. And that's the scene of what was left of the city of Hiroshima after the U.S. government took pleasure in dropping an atomic bomb on this place that had little or no military value at a time when the war was absolutely conclusively won. And here's a more recent scene in the Iraqi city of Fallujah. Unfortunately, I could not find any of the photographs that depict in a visually compact way the full horror of what the U.S armed forces did in that city, particularly by their use of white phosphorus and other munitions that have horrifying effects on human beings. Many of you are young and you're mobile as a result, more mobile than you will be later when you have families and more established jobs and connections and so forth. Uh, I would, if I were in your position, I would consider seriously getting out of this country. Not because I think any other country is a paradise, by the way, but because I think no other country has the means that the government of this country has to carry out these horrifying surveillance programs and other measures of state tyranny. 
So uh, I'm going to move. I'd suggest you might consider moving somewhere else. And don't be put off by the fact that other places are not not uh, islands of laissez-faire. Uh, many, many other countries in the world are, are, are perfectly awful from the standpoint of the kinds of governments they have. But thank goodness those governments are poorer. 